Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. It's Staycation Destinations on Family Life. On today's trip, the launching pad for women's rights in America. Each week, all summer long, we'll map out a unique opportunity for you to discover somewhere unique in our two states, fairly close to home and affordable, whether that's for a day trip or a longer destination. I'm Greg Gillespie, and today we go to a historical park that made big news 175 years ago this week. Hi, I'm Rebecca Weaver, a park ranger at Women's Rights National Historical Park here in Seneca Falls, New York. What does Convention Days commemorate, and what is happening there at the park this week? So Convention Days is an annual event uh, following the weekend closest to what happened uh, this year, 175 years ago, at the first Women's Rights Convention. So held July 19th and 20th of 1848 was the first time that men and women gathered together to talk about equality in the United States. And we spend all weekend long hosting a bunch of different activities. Our theme this year is Women, Gender, and the Law. So we'll be looking at the laws that barred women down. So we'll have a keynote speaker come on in, and we'll have talks about the Supreme Court. We have living historians, so Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth K. Stanton, organizers of the convention, will be around. There'll be a historic baseball game that you can participate in, along with a tea time craft that kids can participate in and make their own little sashes to commemorate their visit here. So we are gearing up for a very special year this year because it's the 175th anniversary of that first Women's Rights Convention. There's going to be events not only with us, but throughout Seneca Falls as well. What's the significance of what these women did, women and any men who were supportive, as the launching point of this movement? The first Women's Rights Convention was the first time that men and women came together to have a public conversation about what is it like to be a woman in the United States. A lot of the laws and customs that we did made it so that women were were not seen as equals. They weren't allowed to vote, couldn't speak up in certain settings, have an equal education, to hold on to property, and that included their own paychecks. So this was the first time that five ladies, uh, Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Jane Hunt, Marianne McClintock, along with Martha Coffin Wright, sat down for a cup of tea and decided to organize a gathering of folks to talk about this and see how can we achieve equality? What's a game plan and what are we going to be looking for? And out of this convention, they created a document called the Declaration of Sentiments. Based off of the Declaration of Independence, it was women calling for their freedoms so that they would be allowed to hold on to their paychecks or be able to go to college today or be able to have their voice heard with the right to vote as well. So 175 years ago was the first call for equality between men and women in the United States. The call itself to attend the convention, about approximately 300 people attended. And from those 300, 100 were willing to put down their names. So there were supporters there that were a little bit like, oh, that's nice, but not right now to mark off my name. There were people who were curious as to what in the world is women's rights. It wasn't an issue that was really brought up until this point. Uh, They've heard about issues like temperance. They've heard about issues like anti-slavery, but this was a brand new one. Uh, When it gets published in the newspapers by another gentleman from upstate New York, Frederick Douglass, the country finds out what happens and... Elizabeth K. Stanton likes to say everywhere from Maine to Texas tried to make them the laughing stock of the United States, tried to turn it into a joke. But sure enough, people were interested in it, and it continued to grow with enough support that two weeks later in Rochester, a second convention was held, and then two years later was the first national convention. Our guest is Rebecca Weaver, a ranger at the Women's Rights National Historic Park in the Finger Lakes area. Was there negative reaction to this 175 years ago? So there was some pushback. There were folks who didn't really see this as, well, is this necessary? Or thought it was maybe not right now. But they were lucky enough to have a good group of about 100 people who were willing to sign off on it, have the support of Frederick Douglass, who was willing to publish about it, and continue to grow support as individuals read about it in the newspapers. Rebecca, this historical park is open year-round. What do your guests experience whenever they come to the Women's Rights Historical Park? for their visits? We are open every day, 
uh, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we have a visitor center located at 136 Fall Street in Seneca Falls. And that has downstairs a couple of exhibits, and then we have a museum as well. And then our big thing is we have the Wesleyan Chapel that the First Women's Rights Convention was held in. So you can still go into and be in that space, and we have ranger programs throughout the day that go over the history of that site. Uh, The park also has homes of the organizers. So we have the McClintock House in Waterloo, New York. So we offer programs seasonally and more often on the weekend, but we have it up on our park calendar there. And that's where they organized and helped put to words what was going to happen at the First Women's Rights Convention. And we also have the home of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She used her home to bring people together to talk about women's rights as well. So that's here in Seneca Falls, and we offer tours of that location as well. And you're part of the National Park Service, so the price is right. Absolutely. We are free, so you can come and visit us whenever. We do not have any charge, even for our special programs this weekend or any day of the year. What are some of the favorites that you hear from from the tourists and the history buffs and the families that visit the center? A lot of folks don't know that we're here, so please come on out. But this started out with five women who were just sitting down and realized that they had the skills to do something to make the world a little bit better. And it's a story that relates. It's a family member coming up for a visit, sitting down and talking about life and realizing that the change that they can make and taking action on it. Uh, So a lot of folks resonate with the story of the organizing of the convention themselves. And along with sitting in the chapel, um, we get a lot of folks who love to go in and just sit and take in the chapel itself, or it went through a lot of changes, but you can still feel the history that happened in that space. Our thanks to Ranger Rebecca Weaver at the Women's Rights National Historical Park. It's located in Seneca Falls, New York, in the Finger Lakes area, about halfway between Rochester and Syracuse. Listen each Friday all summer long on air and online for staycation destinations. Hear these features on our news podcast page and check out a bonus tidbit about another unique location with an online side trip suggestion each week on the website. I'm Greg Gillespie. Buckle up and enjoy your journeys.